What constitutes a lawful eviction or removal from public land? Hi, I'm Simon Dippenau and I'm an attorney. Another attorney, Jeffrey Alsop, recently contributed an article to campaigning website Ground Up on removal from public land. I thought I'd share some of his insights with you today. You can't help but have noticed the number of tent villages that have sprung up in the past two and a half years. The economic crisis sparked by the COVID pandemic has led to a significant increase in occupations of public land by destitute people. Many newspaper articles have spoken out against the removal of people from public land. Alsop explains what the law currently says about lawful removal from public land and what circumstances allow it. The constitution says that no one can be evicted from their home or have their home demolished without a court order. So someone who has established a home on public land, whether they have done so lawfully or unlawfully, is protected by the constitution from eviction until a court authorizes it. Correspondingly, any structures erected to serve as a home can't be demolished or removed until a court order allows it. This includes shacks, if the shacks are being used as homes. Demolishing the shack is unlawful without a court order, even by government. This constitutional right is enshrined in legislation by way of the Prevention of Illegal Evictions Act, PI. Now, in compliance with PI, the government can only evict someone from a home created on public land with an eviction order granted by the High Court or the Magistrates Court. PI also makes it necessary for government to secure a court order to demolish or remove any structures built on the land, such as shacks or tents. However, PI also allows a court to set out reasonable conditions for the demolition or removal of structures on the land. This might include the requirement for government to return to the occupiers any materials used to build the shack. Furthermore, two main requirements must be met by government. The eviction must be just and equitable, and it must be in the public interest to evict the occupiers from public land. In deciding these two requirements, or whether these requirements are met, Pine instructs the court to consider all relevant factors. The needs and rights of the elderly, children and disabled people on the land, the health and safety of the people occupying the land and the general public, the circumstances that caused occupiers to occupy the public land in the first place, and the period of time they've lived there, the availability of other suitable accommodation or land for them. PI ensures that anyone in danger of being evicted from a home erected on public land is given 14 days notice of eviction proceedings and an opportunity to argue their case and fight the eviction. They are entitled to be represented by legal aid if they can't afford a lawyer. It's important to note that PI only applies to an eviction from land or property that the occupier regards as their home. If someone occupies land but does not consider it their home, they can be removed without a court order and any structures they have erected can be demolished. The trouble is, neither the constitution nor PI defines a home. PI does define a building or structure. And this definition includes a hut, shack, tent or similar structure or any other form of temporary or permanent dwelling or shelter. It still needs to constitute a home before the government needs a court order to evict people from public land. And the courts have not made it clear when a structure is a home for the purposes of PI. But it appears that a structure counts as a home when it provides shelter from the elements or functions as a dwelling for human habitation, is the primary residence of the person who occupies it, is regularly or permanently occupied by the person who lives in it. For example, a holiday home is not a home in terms of PI. Similarly, similarly, when a structure is put up and taken down each day, it's not, it is not a home, for example, cardboard structures. The definition of home for the purposes of PI is ever-changing as more cases come before the courts. We hope the courts will eventually develop other tests to determine when a structure constitutes a home. If you're worried about your rights under PI or if you have an eviction or property-related matter you would like to discuss with an attorney, you can give me a call on the number on the signature below.